Okay, let's go live here. Let's see here. Are we going live at all? No, there we go. Okay, we should be. Hello, everybody. How are you? We're being live streamed, it says here. Okay, we're glad to we're, we're doing okay now. How are you, everybody? Glad to see you once again. Here we go. This is our this is our uh, Monday program, and we love our Monday program program and all the people that are involved in it. So let's start getting some of them in here. Uh, here comes, let me see here. First of all, uh, Charlene and Edward Berger. Hello, hello, Edward. Are you there? Yeah, there I am. There, we got to hear your voice. We That's got... right. Andrew Deutsch is joining us. Vernon Nunn and Len LaFrisco is about to pop in here. Uh, Scott Boniker, we got to admit him. Here he comes. Uh, there we go. There's Scott Boniker in uh, Plano, Texas. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're um, we're going strong here. Let me just make sure that we're going out okay. Um, by the way, I just noticed today on my Facebook page they remo removed my photo, so I haven't had time to replace it. So. Don't give me a bad time if I don't have a face there on my Facebook page. Some people will write me about that. Oh, you don't have a, pay, a face on your Facebook page. So, and you got to have a face on your Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. So how's, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. Yeah. Where's my wife? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Where's she? Where's her friend um, too? Oh, well. Where's Paula? Yeah. Yeah. Where's Paula? Oh well. Did did Ed go on vacation to Brazil? Oh no, no, that's um, that my uh, my niece did. So she brought me a, brought me a hat. Uh, yeah, and you look fetching in that hat. That's right. <laughs> Here, here's a stick. Go fetch. <laughs> uh, that was that was that was my home for ten years. Brazil? That that was oh, Brazil. Where? Where was your home? Brazil. Brazil. I used to live in Brazil. Yeah, I was there for ten years. I hear now. I hear now. It's a very dangerous place. It was then, and it's worse now. Really? Oh yeah. 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 I, I looked down the barrel of a couple of guns in my years over there. Really? Mm -hmm. What made in you in my live, office? What made you live down there? Work. Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. When I met you, Alex, I was in, in in town from Brazil. Oh really? I was yeah. Yeah. The time I was in the studio, I was still living there. Oh, incredible. Okay. Yep. It's nice to know. Uh, Candace, he changed it. Let's see here. Here comes. Oh, here, here we go. We got, got some more regulars coming in. Here comes Marjorie Miller, and here, hey. comes, huh? Hey. Here comes Candace's husband. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why does? Why is that up there? What? Your name is there as uh, Candace. He changed it. Yeah. So my wife uses um, the Zoom as she's building her app yeah, all the time. And so, you know, I'm piggybacking. She's got like the best Zoom there is. And so I just sign in on that and normally change my name, but it doesn't give me an option to change my name when I come in here until I'm in here. I can change it now though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just wondering. Yeah. Getting back to Brazil, uh, you know, I've, I, there was a time in my life where I just fell in love with Brazilian music. I mean, uh, it just, it must be in, in some ways outside of the crime, it must have been a joy to live there or not. Um, no, no, <laughs> it was the first, the first couple of years I was there, it was kind of, you know, it was new and different, but uh, it got more and more treacherous every year. How many years were you there? 10. What? <laughs> yeah, that's where I met my wife, had all my kids were born there. How, I mean, wow. what you, you got a job down there, right? No, I, it's a, it's a long story. The short version is I went down to work on, on a project and it was the, the if you remember the history of Brazil, they were a dictatorship mm -hmm. and then they had their first president caller. He was impeached. Yeah. When he was impeached, <laughs> the new guy, the new guy came in and the, the market finally opened for international trade. And I was working on a project and that project blossomed into like 15 other projects. And I decided wow. to stay. I only went down for 90 days. Um, <laughs> And I ended up staying, and I ended up meeting my wife, getting married, um, and it was home for ten years. Yeah, and she's so still, nice, your, you know, and she's still your wife. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Yep. 
this year will be 20, 29 years. Was she Brazilian? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Cause oh, he, she moved here with you. Wow. Yeah, she came up and the kids all all came and and then her her ex husband decided to leave Brazil and now he lives up the street from us so he could be around his his <laughs> his older. So now he lives in the states. Yeah. Modern it's always, family. It's, man. Yeah, it's always fun to introduce the guy that can't speak English. That's my wife's ex husband in Cleveland. So. After all these years, <laughs> he can't speak English. He's only been been four or six months now living in the oh. states. Oh, he can okay. speak a little bit. But he's, he's a good guy. He well, he didn't used to be a good guy, but he's a good guy. So, <laughs> so you speak people fluent, change. You you speak speak fluent Brazilian. Yeah, Portuguese. Yeah, Portuguese. same same Portuguese. same as English. Portuguese. Among other things, yeah. I, if if when I speak, they don't know in the south they know, but anywhere else in Brazil, they think I'm a local. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. When you I first went the same, there, you didn't speak a word of it, right? No. No. I, you know, oh. I've never been able, to, I've never been in a situation where I had to have a second language. You yeah. Know? And I, I, yeah, can't, I, I can't even imagine that, you know. I can speak Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, and French. I can read a little Swedish, a little Mandarin. But I bet no matter how many languages you speak, when you start counting, what language do you count in? Oh, always in English, yeah. People always add or do mm -hmm. addition uh, with math. You're right. Native language. My father spoke perfect English. He loved English. I mean, I, I I didn't think he had an accent. Everybody told me he did. But uh, he was from Germany and he was spoke perfect English. He kept a dictionary with him at all times. And if he needed to find out what a word meant, he immediately looked it up. You know, that's how he learned. And yet when he'd sit down adding up our monthly bills, it was in German. Absolutely. Yeah, you're the part of your brain that learns language is different than the part that does mathematics. Yeah, yeah. So unless unless you were to study mathematics and force yourself, yeah. But you know, you know, you speak a foreign language and you start dreaming in it. Yep. Oh, but, really? Yeah, yeah. Or telling puns in it. Yeah, well, they don't. They, oh. It's funny because in Portuguese they don't do much with puns, and I would make puns with the language, and people would look at me like I was an idiot, which you know I am, but that's a whole other thing. So, <laughs> Like do, all, all, do all languages have puns? I they 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 do, but they're not considered funny in a lot of languages the way they are yeah. with English. Yeah, but but yeah, it was uh, it, the first, and it's weird too because you know when you're learning a language, you're you're in that mode where you you just can't communicate, you can't understand, and it's almost like one day someone flips a light switch, and all of a sudden you're fully communicating. It was one one day, all of a sudden I was understanding, I was speaking like. And people were looking at me like, when the hell did you start? You know, it, yeah. it, it was a shift. Yeah. But uh, even today, I haven't, I moved back to the States in almost 20 years and, and I still am fluent. Mm. I don't, I don't speak it every day. So Marjorie, where's Paula? I don't know. Oh, really? Well, she's your friend, you know. Well, I didn't hear. Oh, she's my friend too, but I, she's Absolutely. your Absolutely. I, I, um, uh, when I married you, I adopted her. As a friend. <laughs> oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Oh. Son of a bitch. Speaking of the devil. And Alex <laughs> said, let there be Paula. And, and it was so. And we're waiting for her <laughs> to join. She's not joining. But uh, oh, here she comes. There Definitely. she is. Okay. All right. Uh, hold on a second. She probably has to hit her button there. Paula? Can you hear us, Paula? She has the, the the audio turned off. I got oh well, there she there, is. There, there, there. Paula, we were just talking about you. Everybody was asking where you were. Oh, how <laughs> nice! <laughs> just got here a little bit late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we we felt it was Marjorie's responsibility because. <laughs> <laughs> Hi y'all. Hi. Hi. Happy spring. Yeah. Oh, happy! It is finally. It's kind of springy. Yeah. Wednesday, it's supposed to be in the 80s. Jeez. I shouldn't have said that out loud. But yeah, but will, it, but will it be sunny? Well, that's another story. But the pollen count's going to be very high. Pollen count today is very high. It's up around 10. Mm -mm. Yes, it is. It's 10. Not as high <laughs> as Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Well, okay. So you brag about Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Go ahead. <laughs> you know. You say the pollen pollen count? I just see one. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. I tell you a very funny story about Marjorie, but I can't. No. <laughs> uh -oh. Because if I told you the story, uh, it, it, somebody might be listening who was involved in the story and you don't. Like you know. me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. so don't tell it. What? No. Don't tell it. No, I'm not gonna no it's Wednesday it. night. No, I can't do that either. <laughs> I can't do that either. It's it's well, I won't I won't even say what it was. Please no. don't. But it's I'm if, I'm if I could tell this story, you'd be laughing your heads off. No, I won't. I'm I know already. I won't. <laughs> no, I know you wouldn't, but they would. Well, not at my expense. So don't they, tell they it. They would please. find this very funny. Yeah. Yeah. And they would feel sorry for me. So they would take great pity on me, but it's it, now they're now they all want to know what the hell the story is. That's the problem, you know. I don't want to laugh at Marjorie. No, no, I don't want to laugh at Marjorie. No. No, I think it's an act of heroism, Alex, that you are containing yourself. <laughs> it's kind of unusual, huh? <laughs> but uh, it's a funny <laughs> story. Funny at whose expense. Uh, at, at my expense, if they yeah, knew right. the story, if they knew my knew the story, but anyway, I can't talk today. My lips feel swollen today, puffy. It's the Paul account, is it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> could be, could be. Anyway, so uh, anyway, um, uh, let me see here. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, oh God, I'm glad that. Fucking golf game is over with. <laughs> yep. No, it, what happens is it disrupts my viewing of television. <laughs> okay, sixty minutes went out on, a, on an hour late last yep. night. CBS Sunday Morning didn't even go on. Okay, and all because these guys are like you know playing this essentially white man sport. I watched 60 Minutes on Paramount. Hmm? Watch 60 Minutes on Paramount. You no, get they, the whole they, show, no commercial. They, no, but they were running last week's. They're not running this week. Sunday morning is they're not running. They're running last week's for the Sunday morning program. Yeah, you can write, but 60 Minutes doesn't go on at 7 o'clock on uh, Paramount Plus. The next, the next morning. Well, I want to watch it that night. <laughs> yeah, but these guys know. have to hit I, a little I, ball with a, no, I find into, that like, a, into a basket. I find that like 60 minutes is not, <laughs> I can't say, ah, I'll watch it later on in the week. It's not one of those things you watch later on in the week. That's a, it's a news show, you know? You want it all now and fresh and, and whatever, right? Am I wrong or right? You're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, then, we, get up, we get up close and personal about the latest shootings. They don't, oh. that, that, there's no delay there. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah. You know, Marjorie did, it said to me, you know, there were two shootings over the weekend. Isn't that horrible? I said, yeah, there was another one today, too. In Harlem. I, I, it, no, those were in Harlem over the weekend. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and by the way, we are neither of them. So, <laughs> yeah. but I, I learned how many doors there were in the courtrooms in New York City. That was exciting. Oh, yeah. That was how bad. many doors? Oh, Freaking oh. coverage of the Orange Menace and his uh, yeah. his demise. Uh, uh, yeah, and his, and the doors he went through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not mentioning his name. It doesn't. Please he don't. doesn't need any more press. That's <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Speaking of mass shootings, we had one this morning in my city. Well, yeah. I'm saying, uh, yeah. Where, where? In Louisville. In Louisville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what I was saying is she comes home and she says to me, Yeah, there were there were two two shootings over the weekend. I said, There was one today. I said, there'll be one tomorrow and one the day afterwards and one the day after that, because nobody's learning any lessons about gun control. And nobody will. Yeah. Well, they're they're uh, they're still investigating, but in our case, there were four bank employees of the old national bank who were killed. The guy who killed them was a 23-year-old finance major who worked at the bank right. using, a, using a rifle. They won't say what kind yet because it's an ongoing investigation. But he was 23 years old and he had worked at the bank for a year and he killed four people who were at a board of directors meeting. Mm. 
thing well, before, the, be, before the bank you know, opens. You, you know, I, I, I let me because we don't like to get too serious. So let me bring something up here that appeared to me last night. They did a thing on sixty minutes last night about the new uh, 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 telescope. Uh, what's the name? William uh, Webb Web telescope. Web, Web telescope. James Webb. Yeah. James, James Webb tel telescope. And they were showing stuff from it. And I'm looking at it, and I'm going to Marjorie. Don't we on this planet realize how insignificant we are? <laughs> how unimportant, how totally, and correct me on this, because we do have an astrophysicist here and with Charlie. Tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but I mean, with all the ultimate uh, universe we have out there, when you start considering what we are here and then what we are as individuals, we're just nothing. Yep. We're nothing. And yet we sit here and we kill each other and we fight with each other and we have wars with each other. I mean, who the hell do we think we are? You know, we are nothing in this universe and this planet is not that important. There are a lot of other planets out there that are just as important as we are. In fact, I'll, I'll, this is going to be a stupid question, but I will ask uh, Charlie. How many planets are there in the universe? <laughs> Jesus. Well, there are a lot more than we knew about a couple of years ago. Because yeah, found yeah. A lot more galaxies with James Webb. Yeah. They find out. They found out with James Webb. There's a lot more space out there. In fact, somebody said, "Isn't it wrong calling it space because there's no space there?" <laughs> there's just a space. really lot of stuff. No, I mean, there's so much out there, and there's so many planets, and there's so many solar systems, galaxies. Okay, and they were showing this tiny dot, and they said that's about ten galaxies in there. Yeah. You know, and I'm going galaxies. That you know, we're the Milky Way galaxy. Okay, we're not just this solar system. And you just think about the enormity of that, and that we're nothing in it. So what are we fighting each other over? <laughs> you know, why are we making anyone's life miserable? You know, That's why do some politicians wake up in the morning and say, how can I screw up somebody's life? You know, I mean, it's so wrong and we're so insignificant and nobody really, really cares. I mean, do you really think the Academy Awards are that important when you think about the universe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. How, how do you feel about that, uh, uh, Charlie? Because you're the astrophysicist. I mean, does it I, ever I said that for decades? I said how insignificant we are, even, you know. Even in the Milky Way galaxy, we're insignificant. And that's yeah. one of trillions and trillions of galaxies, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it it's kind of amazing, isn't it? That we just we just don't appreciate what we've got yeah. and try and make what we have a paradise for the short time that we're here, you know? And and yet, you know, we all sit around and go, well, uh, Trump did this and the, this is happening in the Ukraine and this is happening somewhere else. And you go, Why? Why? Uh, can't we just all get along? <laughs> no, it doesn't seem to happen. Apparently not. What's that, Rodney? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what does your shirt say today? Oh, just that's how I roll. How I roll. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand mathematics to read his T-shirts. That's, mm -hmm. that's the great problem with him. So anybody doing anything interesting lately? <laughs> you got me hooked on rabbit hole. It's not bad, is it? No, I, I sat there and watched all four shows back to back. Were, didn't you say you were watching it, uh, Paula? Watching what? Rabbit, rabbit hole? hole? No. Oh, no. What was it you were watching? Oh, you were watching. Oh, I can't remember what it was. I can't either. <laughs> oh, well. I think Mandy recommended that for us. What yeah. Was it? Yeah, where's yeah, Mandy? It was Mandy. It was Mandy. Where's Mandy? You know what else is good? Uh, Beef, the new okay. Netflix show. Is it good? It looked good to me. It right did. On. It did. It did. It's 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 thought provoking, and the acting, the performances are amazing. Oh, it, what's it called? I, I really Beef. 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 Ali Wong and the guy I can't think of his name. Jung from uh, Stephen Jung, the, the Asian. Stephen Jung. He was the Asian fellow that was on um, uh, awesome. Walking Dead before he, he oh, got his head bashed in. Um, really, really good actor. Oh, really? better than yeah. yeah. It was. It's it, it's it's a basically 
a, a someone honking at someone in a parking lot and then getting angry with road rage escalates into this whole yeah story. that's what it looks like to me road rage yeah, yeah. but it, it goes it keeps escalating and escalating it it, it was it was worth watching so. i'll tell you what i did i did watch uh, um a very old movie that I think it holds up beautifully. And the movie is Oh God with George Burns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, really? And John Denver and Terry Gore yeah. and Paul Servino. And, and it, it's totally charming and, and absolutely wonderful. And nobody dies. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was a good movie. I remember that when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. Well, back to Alex's premise about what are we doing to each other? Remember the premise of the day the earth stood still? Yeah. Yeah. The main premise of that was, you know, America, the whole planet was in danger of, you know, annihilating everybody. And so these aliens came down and said, you need to correct your ways or we'll do it for you. Well, they also, the plot there was is that they didn't want us to leave this planet and right. cause the kind of destruction everywhere else that we do here. <laughs> no. can you blame them yeah but i mean that's basically <laughs> the the premise behind it you know that oh you know if you want to blow yourselves up go ahead but if you the day comes that you want to leave this planet and go out there we're going to stop you you know we're going to prevent you from doing that uh and uh you know i mean uh, it, it's a corny that film is a corny film by today's standards but at the time it was pretty profound yeah. you know they didn't make films like that uh, and that was a that was a very good movie. I'll tell you, Alex and I watched what was it six seasons of the Larry Sanders show? Mm. Yeah. yeah. We went all the way back and watched them from the beginning. <laughs> it, it holds up. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Brilliant. Yeah. And then the other day I went to uh, to a play with some friends. And after it was over, one of my friends, uh, her her nephew was one of the actors in the show. Uh, Joshua Molina, cousin. No kidding, cousin, cousin. Yeah, and and oh, that's he, awesome. I love Josh. Yeah, and he is. Do you know him personally? No, but and he's call in, him Mr. Like, Molina, please. Well, I love Mr. Molina. <laughs> he's awesome in all senor, the Aaron Sorkin senor shows. Molina. <laughs> no, but he in the last uh, season of uh, of uh, Larry Sanders, he's the guy that pushes him out from the network. And, uh, uh, oh. you know, then, of course, that night, there I am, and we're at the stage door saying hello to, to Josh, who I now know, so I can call him Josh. <laughs> <laughs> He's he so good in uh, in West, Sports Night and the West Wing. Sports yeah. Night, yeah. West Wing, sports yeah. Night. Oh, yeah. Sports, yeah. And sports Night was a great show that everybody's probably forgotten. Not me. Oh, man, what a good show that was. Yeah, Marjorie hated it because it had a laugh track, but that was only for the first season. The second season, Alan, Aaron Sorkin was willing, uh, was not willing, he was able to get rid of the laugh track. But if you listen to the laugh track in the first season, you can barely hear it. You know, he probably told the sound guy, just don't play it really low. <laughs> You know, I gotta I, check my DVDs of that one. I feel like I watched it without. I think it's a, there's a special feature where you can watch it without the last. No, track. I don't think so. No, no. way. What? Mm. No way. What? You can watch it without the last track. Uh, well, it might be. I, they might have done it, but you know, he, Sorkin didn't want a laugh track. He didn't feel oh. it needed a laugh track, and he was right because in the second season they didn't have one, and the show worked just fine. That was his first one, wasn't it? His first TV series? I think that was his first series. I feel yeah. like it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, in a lot of ways, it... Uh, and, and then he, he took some of those people over to, to West Wing as well, you know. and Including he, Josh. Including or Mr. Molina, Josh. sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... You know, but I mean, we we love the Larry Sanders show. Was uh, really it hey now, up. it holds up. It, it really holds up. up. Yeah. Oh yeah. After what 25, 30 years? Um, we twenty five years. Yeah. yeah. And then we watched the um, the tribute, which the was documentary great. about yeah Larry Sanders that they did on HBO. Judge Apatow did. So good. Yeah, very good, and uh. uh 
I don't think you were ever really into Gary Shandling up to this point, were you, Marjorie? I remember it, but I don't remember being totally into it, but it was such a joy to rewatch them. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah, they were they were terrific. They were terrific. And uh he was a terrific performer. It's really Yes, he was. Really sad. Yeah. It, it was, was fun to watch Judd Apatow's name go higher in the credits of that show as 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 it went along. It was neat uh, to see that. He basically started with Shanling as a hanger on as a kid yeah. who just hung around him. And then they brought him in on that show and he put him in as a producer or something like that. But more and more, he directed it and wrote episodes and, and so on. And, that and he was, was involved in that documentary. Well, he did the documentary. He did the yeah. documentary, did yeah. yeah. And, and Apatow then went on, because of this, it gave him his ability to direct and to know how to direct, to go on and do movies like The 40-Year-Old Virgin and a lot of other films that were, and I, which I, I can't get Marjorie to watch, but it's a great film. Alex, did you watch Freaks and Geeks? No, I never did. I know about... You know what? Not very many episodes. It's probably worth watching. I love Absolutely. that show, and a lot of people love that show. It's a, yeah. it's a cult who, classic. Who, who did it's, that? it's fantastic. You'd love it, Alex. Yeah, I know. I've watched, I think, one episode or something. Who who did that show? There was some... That's Judd. Judd. That was Apatow, too? Yeah. yeah. That's what look he moved in, on to. Yeah. Look at all the more, people who came more. out of that show. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like who? Uh, Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen, yeah. Um uh pineapple. Jason, Who's the other Jason pineapple Siegel. Uh -huh. Jason, Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel. I can't think of her name, but she was on ER and then did that show with Christine Applegate recently. Yeah. Uh, and then oh, the, Linda Cardinale. It could be. She kind of she's short, very, very good actress. Yeah, I can't think of her. I can't think of her name. This is a new show um, doing here. There's, there's like, the there's, there's like twelve obscure shows. Like twelve show. people who, who, there's like twelve people who came out of that show that you would recognize. Hmm. That are, that have all been very successful. They were on that. I can't think of the name of that comedy uh, IT show that was on HBO. That the guy who did Silicon oh, Valley. Yeah, Silicon Valley. They were on there. A bunch of really. It's, it's a great show. Yeah, but I mean. It, 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 uh, what, what did I watch? You know what I watched the other day? Marjorie didn't watch it with me. I watched the 1931 version of the Maltese Falcon. Wow. It's really a good film. You know, um, uh, that film was made two other times before they ever made it in, what, 1941 that John Huston directed. They did it twice before. One was this version. It was called The Maltese Falcon. It was Ricardo Cortez as Sam Spade. Is All he? those characters are there. It's, and it's really a very good film. A terrific film. And then the second version was... Anybody know what the second version was? It wasn't called The Maltese Falcon. Okay, well, uh, it, it was uh, called uh, Satan Metal Lady, and it starred Betty Davis. Oh. And uh, this no uh, idea rather foppish guy is Sam Spade, and it was kind of it's kind of wacky. I mean, it's not really what you expect the Maltese Falcon to be. But Warner Brothers had the rights to the Maltese Falcon, so they said, "Let's make it again." In 1936, and then in 1941, it came back again in the version that everybody knows and loves. But oh. I sat there and watched that from beginning to end, and went, "Wow, this is really good." Yes. I, I, I got to run. It was great seeing you. See you next okay. week. Bye, Andrew. Bye, Andrew. Bye everybody. Bye-bye, Andrew. Uh, anyway, so the, 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 that's some of our watching. What are you watching, Marjorie? Marjorie watches different stuff than I do. I am, am banished to the guest room <laughs> while she watches watch all, all this of stuff. And all then if I ask her what she's watching, she probably can't tell you. <laughs> come on marjorie come on tell me well before i go to sleep i watch something that's going to make me go to sleep you watch you watch uh Definitely. you watch the ramble yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, yes what, i watch the ramble alex <laughs> no wait no what are, what are you watching to put you to sleep now it's like a bunch of uh, furry things right animals 
the animal planet, mm. animals. And that makes you drowsy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. Even when the animals kill each other? Yeah. I'm asleep before that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I often, what I loved was, uh, uh, you know, some of these channels like uh, that used to have nothing but one little animal eating another little animal. I never could figure that out, you know. Then there was another channel. Remember A and E became the Hitler channel? Do you remember that when they first started? Every before the history, history channel it, showed up, it was the history channel essentially. Yeah. yeah. Well, then they did night at the uh, night at the comedy. Uh, what is it? Uh, night at uh, what was the comedy club? Um, Caroline? No, no, no. Improv. Was owned by Bud Free. Improv. Improv? improv. Yeah, improv. Yeah, night at the improv. Night at the improv. Yeah. Night at the improv. See, I'm forgetting everything now. Night at the Improv. Evening at the Improv. And so the two most recurring people on early A&E were Hitler and Bud Friedman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I had something fun happen last night. My mom and dad took my wife and I out to a movie, okay. which I thought was just charming as all get out. Was Josh in it? Josh wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I saw. Yeah. Um, my mom, she wanted, when she saw the commercial for the new air movie, mm -hmm. my mom was like, Michael, I would really like to take you because I remember how much you liked those shoes as a child. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a, and I have a pretty good, I have a pretty respectable air Jordan. What does collection it say? Now. You've, you've, you've worn the shoes now. See the movie. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Right their tagline. Yeah. It's a pretty amazing business story actually, but um anyway so my parents took us out to the movie house last night that was a lot of fun and it was a good movie it's yeah. matt damon and ben affleck you bet um uh yeah okay i, I mean marjorie wants to see that i want to see it i think it's coming soon to one of the uh pay to one of your televisions nearby yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was but an amazon studios film so i would assume it'll prime wind up on prime film. yeah, yeah. wind up on prime uh yeah so it was a good movie uh i was i know the story very 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 well because i'm a big jordan guy um and it was factually correct as far as i could see they truncated a few things but it was it was it was pretty bang on you know the thing that i that i've been thinking about that i wanted to that i wanted to see and i've been waiting just uh, it's on netflix so it's available to me i just haven't had time and i marjorie doesn't seem to want to watch it at least she's not excited about it but they did a movie about Tetris. Yeah. And there was a too. lot of international intrigue behind Tetris. Uh, and uh, it's supposedly a really good kind of almost spy movie. I mean, it's a strange situation. I don't, I don't know what it was exactly, but supposedly Tetris came out of Russia. Mm -hmm. But it was by way of some guy who invented it in the United States. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I want to see that movie very I want to see that. Is it a is it a movie or a series? Uh it's a it's a movie. Okay. I want to see it too. It's on it's on Apple TV if you want to watch it. So that's the place it's at. Um has anybody seen the new uh, John Stewart show on Apple TV? The problem with John Stewart. <laughs> uh he just doesn't, he doesn't have it anymore. No. You can't, know? You, can't you pull that up on Spotify? Didn't I see that? No, that's not, uh, it's not a, not a podcast. It's an actual show. He, I think oh. he has, I think he does have a, uh, a podcast, however. Yeah. He does. But, you know, um, but yeah, I watch, I'll tell you what I've been watching are all these people who've been doing the daily show. Uh, and there's this black comedian last week who did. I'm trying to remember his name now. Roy Wood Jr. Roy Wood Jr. Wasn't he good? He was great. He was terrific. <laughs> I went to my. I said to myself, "Where did this guy come from?" He's been on the show as a you know contributor for years. Yeah, man, he was good on that show. Uh, and of course, of course, he got handed a good week though. The week that you know Trump went yeah. to, went to the courthouse. 
I love, I think the best story of the week was Marjorie Taylor Green gets out of a car <laughs> with her megaphone and starts yelling and screaming, I don't know, some kind of uh, uh, QAnon nonsense. And they were ready for her down there. They brought well, they were police screaming and whistles. yelling, and finally they started. No, they, whistling they brought police with whistles. whistles and started blaring the police whistles. And she got so frustrated, she just left, got back in the limousine, and and left the area. It didn't however, last more than a however, few minutes. However, that's yeah. not the end of the story. New, there's a a noise ordinance in New York City that you can't use a megaphone unless you have a permit to permit. do so. <laughs> and she didn't so they sent her a, a penalty of 250 dollars <laughs> <Beautiful. laughs> mm -hmm. that's interesting because i had heard that her uh, uh on the news that her megaphone didn't work i thought that was funnier <laughs> oh really that was the other part of it yeah, uh, yeah. sorry how how come her megaphone what well, megaphones don't work unless you, maybe the batteries ran out yeah. i don't know by the way, the problem with John Stewart is that the show that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's on my Spotify. What? Really? Really? Uh, the, the video? The video? Or is it just the audio version of it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It says all the episodes. Oh, could be. You could be right. About I don't it. think Apple TV would allow him to sell it to Spotify. You know, uh, because they're paying for it. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's probably true. It's probably just the, the audio. Yeah, it's just the audio. Okay. For a while, he was doing them on uh, YouTube. He was doing video and audio. Yeah. But his show isn't that good. It's not good at all. Yeah, it's not. It, 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 briefly, for about the first five minutes, it's okay. He's kind of doing what he did on the Daily Show. But then uh, he, uh, it's just, it's, it's a, a very boring show. You know. I'm I'm sorry to hear that because he started yeah. it all, and he was so good when he went off the air. I really missed him. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was quite missed. But I, you know, maybe he felt, and I would probably agree with him. He had done it for what almost twenty years, was it? How long was it? Oh. And introduced everybody. Yeah, but it, it, a long amount of time. And when he finally quit it, I think I would have quit it at that point, too, and said, you know, hey, you know, enough of this. I've got to get on with my life and do other stuff. He yeah. was Al Franken been a guest host? Yeah. yeah he was one of the he, guest hosts. He yeah. was okay. He got better as the week went on. The two best ones I've seen so far, Roy Wood Jr. and Sarah Silverman. Yeah. Who was really quite perfect. Yeah. You know. Uh, and the only good thing about Franken is he had, uh, what's his name? The, uh, Lindsay Graham. Senator, Lindsay Graham on. Yeah. And did, would you agree with me? I mean, I know Charlie, you hate Lindsay Graham as, yeah, as do I, as do, as, we all human, do. as do most human beings with yeah. a half a brain, but I found him kind of charming on that show. Didn't you? Yeah. I'm, I'm not, sure he's great one on one with people, you know, sitting there having a beer or whatever. But yeah, in yeah. the Senate, he's awful. Well, the thing that Franken said on the show was, he says, "I go out and I do these these stand up comedy shows around the country, and then I have a a, a, a Q and A session that goes on with the audience." And he says, "I inevitably am asked the same question over and over again: Who is the funniest senator?" that you know and he said i always say lindsey graham and then lindsey graham kind of proved it on that show he was quite funny you know at one point the audience uh uh, uh booed him and he said i'm glad you did that because i could never go back to congress if i had gotten out of here without you booing me <laughs> yes, well, wasn't it last week he asked the people to send money to Lindsey graham well, that, hey, that, that's the stupidest thing i yeah. have in my life here it is here's a guy who professes to be a billionaire but let's say he's only worth 500 million <laughs> only but not a billionaire what are you sending him money for? Nine million dollars. What, 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 what are you sending him? Please, everybody, send him money. He's the government is coming after him. Yeah, he's got a billion dollars. Let him fight it. Yeah, 
especially with all those two bit lawyers he has now, because no real lawyer will defend him any longer because they don't get paid. That's right. You know? Yeah. But if you're in that game though, you're going to, any excuse that you have to try and fill your super packs or your packs or whatever and all that, you're going to do that, right? You're going to take every opportunity. I guess, you know, but don't, you know, come on, come on, you got enough money, pay for your own advertising, pay for your own thing. You know, we, you don't need to come to us for it. Come on. You but Lindsey Graham, but Lindsey Graham crying and saying, send money to <laughs> lindseygraham.com. Yeah, he says. And I'll it give it to, to Trump. Yeah. And then he said he would give it to Trump, but send it to me first. Yeah. Send yeah. It to me first. Yeah. Yeah. I'll spend it on some uh, wax lips and then I'll pass the rest on to. Uh... I think that's Lindsey Graham's laundry service. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 all this stuff, I, I kept saying uh, to Marjorie, when, one day I said to Marjorie, I said, you know, if I had written a script like this, then handed it to a studio, they'd laugh me out of the studio. They said, this could never happen. You know, we live in such a bizarre world that what you think would be comedy is no longer comedy. It's reality and it's our reality. Yeah. But I don't want us to get depressed on this show. Yes, Jeff. I think that the president like, should at least put $10 million each month and keep, you know, you got to pay it. You got to, you got plenty of money, right? You got a billion. Who are you talking about? Trump? Trump. Yeah. Oh, Trump. He's not president. You said president and the president. No, I said a uh, former you, Are you one of those people that doesn't believe Joe Biden's president? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, maybe he wants to get money. more money too. I don't know. Yeah. But, Trump's got so much money he doesn't know what to do with. He thinks he, he has totally so much money. No, he, no, he's he. I think he's near broke. I do too. I think he. That's Good. why he's begging for money. You know. <clears throat> yeah. LindsayGraham.com. <laughs> <laughs> Send him the money. Well, let's he's not. A guy that let's get off of politics. With nobody's money. Yeah, let's get he off politics. That, that 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 drives us nuts when we talk about that. You know what I did last night is strange. Um, Shecky's been gone now over a month. Uh, last time he appeared on this program was, I think, five weeks ago. And every day that goes by, it gets harder for me to realize that he's gone. And I, I don't want to bring this up constantly because, you know, it's a bu but the rest of you have a vested interest in it, too, because you kind of all knew him by him being here. And last night I was watching a show he loved and I watched it too. And the show's Riverdale. Now, probably most of you have never watched Riverdale and you know, you don't know what it's about, but he loved the show and, and I did too. And every, every week when we talk to each other, one of the things to bring up is, well, what's happening on Riverdale? Where do you think it's going? Cause the thing that Jackie had was this, ability because he was a big uh, dc comic fan he had a oh, here comes mandy uh, because he was a big dc comic fan he had a an ability uh to um there she is there's my, mandy uh but uh i'm talking about shecky for a second here i didn't want to i don't want to bring him up all the time but he had an ability to because he knew dc comics so well to tell me well that character comes from DC Comics and he was a character back, blah, blah, blah. And he can tell you where it comes from. So when we would watch like Riverdale, he knew a lot about Archie and Veronica and Jughead and all of that. And oh, that was in the second, the last year that they did it and they made him more adult and blah, 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 blah. And so he would always give me context, okay? And, and so I was watching Riverdale last night and I said to myself, I can't watch this alone. And I just started talking to Shecky mm, and nice. saying, hey, you know, uh, let's watch this every week together, mm. you know? And so I kind of felt he was in the room with me watching it, mm. you know, uh, wasn't saying anything, but he was watching it. And that gave me a little bit of, of, of solace, uh, nice. you know, 
because I because every now and then there are things that I go, you know, Shecky would have loved this, or gee, I wish Shecky were around because I could ask him. Like I was watching what Superman and Lois, and they changed one of the actors in it who plays one of the sons, and I and I figured that's what they did, but. What would I immediately do? I'd call Shecky up and say, did they change the guy who plays? Da, da, da? And he would go, yes. And then I knew that I was right. But I went to the think about, go. I'll go ask Shecky. And I couldn't ask mm -hmm. Shecky, you know. Mm -hmm. So I finally decided with Riverdale, I'll watch it with him every week, you know. And it, uh, it gives me oh. solace. Yes, Jeff. A friend of mine died yesterday. Mm -hmm. I knew him when we were three years old. Oh, oh God. Yeah, well, that's the wonderful part about, about getting old. You just have all your friends dying <laughs> on you, you know? He's, he was a year older than me, so yeah. I, I've got at least another year to <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're going to live for quite a while. You survived the worst, you know? That's true. And, and you're on the other side of that. Hello, Mandy. Where were you, darling? I will be honest. I usually have a reminder on my phone, and for some reason, I hadn't said it, and I completely forgot. I had um had a temp today helping me because mm -hmm. the work with me. She quit like last month. Anyway, I had a temp come in, so I've kind of been just buried in that, but just forgot. And I, oh, I like, okay. oh yeah, I'm supposed to be. <laughs> You're, you're entitled to do that. Yeah. Marjorie that. isn't, but you are. <laughs> also, you're an influencer, Mandy. There are people watching Rabbit Hole because of your recommendation now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you still you still liking it? Well, I watched the second episode and at the end I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, just wait. I three tonight and see if I can stick with it. And I think they throw a person out of a building every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Does anybody here watch the Netflix show Love is Blind? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Is that the show where they don't get to see who they're dating? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Remind me not to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like watching a car accident, though. You know, you want to see how it turns out. Didn't they? Didn't they have a show where everybody was dating everybody else nude? Wasn't there one like that too? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen that one. Well, have you watched Naked and Afraid? Naked and Afraid. That's the one. Constantly. You know what bothers me about that? I, I, I don't. I wouldn't mind being naked anywhere. Okay, other people would, but I wouldn't mind <laughs> being naked anywhere. But out in the jungle, come <laughs> on, you know, there are thorns, there are bugs, there are mosquitoes, there are snakes, there are everything yeah. else. And I'm naked. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah, mm -hmm. forget it. <laughs> I mean, and they would throw them out. They were like in the middle of jungles, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think the bad. censors made them do that so it wouldn't be so sexual. <laughs> they, mean, what, they what? I think the censors made them do that because I'm sorry, being out there with bugs and stuff is not sexy to me. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's not fun. It's not fun. But what is the point? Yeah. I don't know because they say, hey, it's like, we'll do Survivor, but if we make them naked, it's you know, is, the, yeah. what could be better than that? <laughs> on the first survivor some of them were almost naked anyway yeah, yeah oh yeah richard richard mm -hmm. hatch got naked hatch, yeah. 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 yeah yeah so you know i think i think it's terrific uh, you know <laughs> but in but and then the, here's the thing they they sucker you into watching this thing called naked and afraid and you figure well it's going to be a guy and it's going to be a woman mm -hmm. they're going to be naked okay i'll watch that wait a minute they blurred out her breasts and they blurred, blurred out his penis. What's the sense of all of this? You know, why should I even watch it? To feel I have bad eyesight? Yeah. <laughs> so I, think I, looking, I, I think they want the same people as contribute to, to, to Trump. I mean, you know, it just makes <laughs> no sense. LindsayGraham.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got you to remember, Trump came to fame to the national public. Yeah. 
as an as a reality host. Uh -huh. You know, a and failed reality host. A, a failed that wasn't reality. Reality. That's That's what he That's likes to say, Oh, I was the highest rated guy ever on TV and whatever. Yeah. The season that show was a hit. The second season, all the other seasons, it was dead in the water. My friend uh, Gilbert Gottfried was on a season with Trump mm -hmm. of the uh, of The Apprentice. The season he was on, I, I saw a, a thing. I said, Oh, I see you're on uh, on The Apprentice. He goes, Oh, we did that two years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> that thing was put on the shelf for like a year because that show was considered a loser at that point. Mm -hmm. And it didn't get ratings. And so what they did is they held on to it. And then when some show failed to, miserably, they had to have a replacement. So they simply pulled that off the shelf and threw that on the air. Mm -hmm. But uh, Gilbert said, I didn't ever think it was ever going to make it. Penn yeah. Gillette was on there too, wasn't he? Who? Yes. Penn Gillette. Penn Gillette did it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. actually the first season, like with the real people. I, I thought well, it was cute, but you know. Well, after Celebrity we Apprentice, all these shows go to their celebrity format. Yeah. And yeah. you go, I don't need that, you know? Yeah. Do I really need, I, I like normal people. If it's going to be a competition competing in a show instead of a, you know, and then when the grand prize is given out, it's not like somebody makes five hundred thousand dollars. It's more like, uh, uh, hey, what charity are you going to give it to? Right. right. And it's not like they're going to go work for Trump. Like that's the first guy. You know, he was, or you know, the first winners were supposed to go work for Trump for a year or whatever. They got a job with him in their company. So did yeah, they, they do that? And he was going to go. They were going to go work for him for a year or just a couple of months I or something work in his company you had a job that's what it's called yeah, i thought it was a six-figure job yeah supposedly yeah, yeah and that was that was the prize so you're making six figures right yeah yeah probably didn't even have to show up for work <laughs> they were having to do marketing stuff basically mm -hmm. i don't know yeah. I first season it was like 2011 or 2010 long time i watched ago. that show i think once and found it horribly boring <laughs> It's just really dull. Does the British baking show qualify as a reality show? Because <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it does, it's the only reality show that I have had any interest in in my life. It, no, it's a competition. It's a oh, competition. oh, it's a different. It's a different. It's, it's a, different a competition. Yeah, it's not a reality show. You're not. You're not setting up in England. They they are very decent about reality shows when they're giving the award away. They call it manufactured reality. Yeah, mm. that's good. Because what happens is it's not really reality. People are all playing to the camera. And then when it goes into the editing room, they make one guy badder than the other guy and so on to make it exciting. Wait so, a minute, wait a minute. What's the difference between that and a reality show? That's a reality show that I'm talking about. Oh, oh, okay. But it's manufactured reality. It's not. It's not real reality. I mean, real reality on The Apprentice, somebody would have killed somebody else. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, but this is manufactured reality in which they then say, well, well make this guy's the good bad guy on the show, on the reality uh, show. So what we'll do is we'll edit it so he looks even worse, you know? And so, the, so the attraction is that people... Uh, um, get lined up with with with, with uh, who they're who they're rooting for is that like uh, what happens uh I think it escapes me it has always escaped me the whole the whole reality show thing well the reality show is it's supposed to be reality but it's it's not really i mean it's manufactured survivor was a reality show because the competition between them was supposedly you know only in the beginning only in the beginning only in the beginning I'll tell you what happened. What's his name? The guy who does uh, does uh, Survivor, uh, the producer. Uh, Jeff Probst. Uh, huh? Jeff Probst. No, 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 no. I'm Mark Burnett. 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 Mark, Mark Burnett. Mark Burnett. Mark yeah. Burnett had a thing uh, called what was it called that he did on, and it wound up on like one of the uh, like uh, Discovery Channel or whatever, mm -hmm. and it was the ultimate terrible race. I mean, they they were going through jungles, upsides of mountains. I mean, this took some real ability. And he did about three seasons of that. And it kind of, be, that's what became Survivor eventually. And it was a 
great show. I loved watching that because, I mean, these people were doing the impossible. Stuff I wouldn't do. Stuff I couldn't do. Yes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, uh, they... Uh, uh, I remember that. It was very you good. remember that show? I'm trying to remember yeah. what the name of it was called. It was called, like, uh, I don't know, The Ultimate Race or something yeah. like that. It was always the New Zealanders won it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was done in that part of the yeah. world. Yeah. That's right. You know. But I mean, it was like they first they have to bicycle up this mountain and then they have to climb up the side of a cliff and then they have to go down the other side of the cliff by bunging on a rope. And that. and they have to hunt for their own food. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't think they had to hunt for their food. No. Yes. No, no, no they, not they, on this show. Not on that show. No. They, they had stations they had to get to every 24 hours or something. Then yeah. at the end, rest you, you had to go start through, again. Uh, swimming over... Some kind one of year, one year, they had a, a team of playmates from Playboy, <laughs> but they they came in like third. They were that good at it. Right. Yeah, they were they were a bunch of tough broads. Yeah, yeah that's a marketing too. I'm I'm impressed with that. No, but I mean, they were really good. Um, uh, but he only did this for about two, three years, and then it went off. That's called Talk the about a rabbit hole. World toughest race. The yes, what? I think that's the world's it. toughest race. Well, I don't know if that was the name of it. That was in 2020. Yeah, world's toughest race. No, that was another show altogether. Oh. This had a name. Mark Burnett did that. Yeah, yeah, I know he did that, and I thought he was kind of bringing back that race, but it wasn't as tough as the other one. The other one was unrelentingly tough. You know, I sat there watching the show, getting exhausted, and I wasn't <laughs> doing anything. <laughs> Yeah. So. The eco challenge. Eco challenge. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. How many seasons did it say it lasted? Do you have it there? Uh, let's see. Started three in seasons. ninety-five. Three seasons. Three seasons. Three seasons, three seasons oh. and started in nineteen ninety-five. Yeah. See, I said three seasons. I was right about that. Yeah. It's a great show. Great show. And and I you you admired the people who were doing it. Because you knew they were doing something that, God forbid, I couldn't do. And I think the prize was like a half a million dollars or something. It was like a big prize. Um, but of course, they had to split it up among themselves because there were like three people on a team. And if one person fell out on a team, like, you know, either got hurt or couldn't go any further, the whole team was out. Well, wow. You had to finish as the complete team. Uh, you, know, and, you know, the survivors started out with a million dollar prize, but that was 44 seasons ago. You'd think they'd, up, they'd bring it, <laughs> they'd increase the purse after 44 yeah. seasons. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, and actually, uh, Burnett didn't come up with that. Uh, he came up with it with somebody else who was doing it in England. Uh, at, but it wasn't called Survivor, it was called something else, but the, it was basically the same show. But his, his eco challenge, too, also kind of became Survivor. Only Survivor was the, uh, the, the um, coward's version of the eco <laughs> challenge. You know, because, I mean, people could die on the eco challenge. That's how rough it was. You know, they had, they had medics waiting by and everything. And I just felt that this guy, Mark Burnett, whoever he is, when I watched it, has got to be the most sadistic human being on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Mike Chisholm, how's it going for you? How's the uh, how's the podcast? The Letterman podcast is going very well. We hit our first anniversary on April 20th, and we have a very, 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 very special guest. No, it's not Dave, but... Um, but P.S., you might understand, uh, It's it, yeah, it's going to be a very, very good show. So I'm very excited about that. Um, recorded episodes over the weekend. And I've got another guy who's coming on who was a faxer for, uh, for Letterman for 15 years or something like that. So he was a guy that would send in jokes routinely and get on the monologue, and he would send them in by fax. So he you wasn't know, actually the most on famous staff. person was to fax Letterman jokes for his monologue. Mr. Mr. Johnny Carson himself, or, absolutely. Yeah, Carson would send him, you know. And Carson always said he was afraid to send it to him because he was afraid he was only going to run do the joke because of who it came from. And they were some very funny jokes, supposedly, you know, but he would never say this joke is from Johnny Carson. He would just do it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Johnny had a different fax number. 
than this guy. This guy had a fax number for the writer's room. Johnny's went right to uh, Lori Diamond or right. read to Dave's office. Yeah, right to Dave's office. Yeah. 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 It's going well. Oh, speaking of which, Don Giller sends his regrets. He was going to come on here, but he had a time sensitive errand he needed to do. But he did say he was going to come oh, here. We today. love having Don here. He's a very Absolutely. funny guy. He's a very He's great guy. Weird, but funny. <laughs> Gee, everybody, I love this. I just love this. It's like a little family gets together once a week. Uh, we don't have a crazy uncle here. <laughs> you know, that's uh, you, Alex. I'm the crazy <laughs> uncle. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well done. Yeah. I'll be here all week. Yeah. Uh, there's no crazy uncle in there. No, there are no people yelling at each other about politics over the dining room table. <laughs> you know. Uh, so it's good. Speaking of dining room table, how do you like my wallpaper in my dining room? Ooh, uh, I like it. Uh, that's a lot of wallpaper. <laughs> Actually, it's not. It's not. It's it, it, in. If I were to see it on a on a display and designing wallpaper, I don't know if I would choose that. But in practicality, it works, don't you think? Looks great. Yeah, it's been in the house since my wife and her family moved in in 1962. It was on the wall then. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Really? And it's still there now. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. That wallpaper has been retro three times since then, and it's back in again. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah you're right. I just don't want it to show up on a Zoom background somewhere like they do Tony. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been, we have we have a guy who calls the nighttime show Tony, who has the most hideous wallpaper you've ever seen in your life behind him. And so somebody, when he moved off a of camera, he went somewhere, just froze, freeze framed the, the wallpaper, right. then sent out the wallpaper to all the people who call the show. Yeah. You have one, don't you, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, you have it there. And, and so some nights we all have the same wallpaper. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And it's hideous <laughs> wallpaper. <laughs> You'd think if, if I lived in a house with that wallpaper, I would kill Marjorie. No, no. <laughs> I don't think Tony <laughs> has and, and I love her very much. Let me add that. You know, but it could drive you to that craziness. Has your hair gotten longer, Mandy? Not, wow. Yeah. Has it straight? Just yeah going. okay because i it looked it just looked like it was getting longer um, but no, uh yeah. yeah anyway hey listen everybody this is wonderful charlene you haven't said a word tonight say hello hello uh, okay good <laughs> <laughs> i say one thing before we go yes yes com. <laughs> send him all your pennies send, send him all your pennies you got a penny you got a quarter you got a dollar you have, you have how about if you have a uh uh what's uh, the uh, uh you know the, the phony money now that's going around oh Bitcoin. canadian dollars Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> the loony the loony you got Bitcoin. loonies yeah send him a shekel yeah <laughs> Thank you so much to Charlie for being here as well. Uh, thanks to our good friend, Br Vernon Nunn. Very nice of you, Vernon, to be here. Uh, the lovely and attractive Len LaFrisco. Uh, thank you. He's from the Bay Area. So I should tell you to listen to M Wednesday's um, ramble because uh, I'm going to have on Chuck Farnham. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, in cool. fact, I did three interviews with him and spread out over the next three weeks. Oh, yeah. cool. I haven't seen him in 20, 30 years. What I haven't know? either. That's the reason it's so amazing. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is one of those relationships where I was, he was mad at me and I was mad at him for 25 years. And then one day we couldn't remember why we were mad at each other. Oh, wow. You know? uh, thank you, Scott Boddicker. Out there in Plano, Texas, the home of Snapple. I always love to say that because uh, the only piece of knowledge I have any longer that sticks in my brain. <laughs> Works for me. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks uh, to Mike Chisholm and, uh, and to uh, lovely Marjorie Miller. Thank you so much, Marjorie. I'm glad you could be here and, and phone yourself in all the way from the next room. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, thanks to Paula. God, I love Paula. I just think the world of you, Paula. Jeff, I love you too. 
<laughs> and everybody loves Mandy. That's our new show, by the way, on CBS next year. Everybody loves Mandy. <laughs> but if everybody will give a big wave goodbye, I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, and we will call it. Uh, we Don't will forget call- about. What about Edward? Edward. Oh, 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 and oh, Edward Burger. Oh because God. I pass by you and then I forget to go back to <laughs> And Edward Burger, who signs us off by saying, That's all, folks. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>